can you hear that? Apart from the birds and me talking to the camera, it's flipping quiet. Eerily quiet. cherries are starting to appear. Won't be long and they'll be nice and red. Juicy. Nice sea of nettles and goose grass there. Still got some of my birch bark left from uh, doing my containers at home, so might as well utilise it, eh? Use it for a bit of fire lighting. You ain't gonna see nothing new here, folks. You've seen it all before. There's a thousand and one videos on people using birch bark to light their fires. This morning, a bit of rain on the way in. So things are a little bit damp, not a great deal. I mean, obviously, you can see the birch bark got it going pretty easy. A little bit of preparation, and uh, job, job. It's not like it's windy or anything.
slip knot in there. So I put my toggle through. Obviously bring that down. Position it somewhere in the middle. Okay, handle of the, of the barrel arm. The barrel arm near pot even. And what we do now is that's a little bit too low. So we'll bring it up once more on the top of the tripod. Get that back on. Alright, admittedly it's high now. What we can do is just bring our tripod down and spread the legs out a bit. Actually I'll take that a bit higher because it is actually only power cool. It's titanium pot so it ain't going to be that mega bad to take that mega long to heat up is it? How's it going folks then? Alright, just coming out for a Sunday today, so uh, it's obviously quieter than usual, even better. So, let's see, uh, pot's on, got to have an obligatory brew. And uh, I'm going to show you, here's me open all that I uh, mucked around with. Okay, just a number eight. Got a couple of them, and then I literally just put, scored a little bit of pan in it, nothing, you know, unique. And I literally to get the burn marks I actually scored it over the uh, over my jet ball <laughs> in the shed and uh, it's come out quite nice isn't it almost viking almost viking like shame I still haven't got me uh, face hair and then the other thing that I made if I can keep the camera running and then just get it out and show you I made it yesterday which again I was really impressed how it come out it was a little canoe spoon oh, canoe spoon and again, I literally just carved it out of a bit of cherry, run it over the jet bowl, and that's how the handle come out. That's how it burnt really nice. So it's kind of left the bowl lovely and clear. Nice sort of, you know, nice little spoon, I suppose. So it's very damp this morning. Almost overcast. It's quite humid almost. It's like really, yeah, it's damp. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is um, a couple of projects. I've uh, bought a coil of string out with me, so I'm going to do a basic net, make a basic net while I'm out here. And then, uh, depending on which way it goes, and then also I want to make a, like a simple pack frame. So I've got a load of paracord with me and different cordage and stuff, so that's going to be the sort of uh, the subject of today's kind of stuff. Sort of uh, using cordage and, uh, you know, make a pack frame of sorts. Alright, so uh, we'll see how that one goes. So stay tuned folks for another exciting episode. So there's a bit of crap fire management right now on my behalf because what I've done was obviously I put a load of dry stuff on there and uh, the flame had just come up a bit too high and obviously now I've had to take my tripod off the fire to avoid burning the uh, paracord. So uh, high D 10T area now. But, uh, you know, it's what it is. Should have thought about that one, shouldn't I, a little bit more. Alright, 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 don't get leery about it. My fire's getting leery. So I'll let that flame come down and the tripod go back on. That's better. So for the cordage then I've gathered a couple of uh, 
stinging nettles. I've already chopped that one <laughs> in already. Let's put that to one side. Do another one. I've tried to gather ones, they're not that long. Let's see if I can use these for my uh, for cordage. If not, I've got plenty of cold to use. Sleeve with this thing in there, take the pith out, expose the pith. Don't really want that. This isn't the greatest example I'm showing you now, but at least they're quite fresh. So that's the bit we're going to play with for the lip for the uh, cordage. I'm going to split that in half. And just twist it. Kind of rushing it a little bit, really. So just take my time. They're almost the same length, but I'm starting to form the cordage now. I've added a bit in there now to make that one slightly longer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare that one and bind that in on that to make that longer as well Let's take my time now better off using a bit of wood than a bit of metal because it might cut might damage the outer sheath. My job did a good job of that already. <laughs> I cut my nails yesterday, so they're a bit short. Could use a knife. Not the prettiest, but you'll do. So we'll let's take that off there, we'll split it down a bit more. Just give us an extra bit. Right. Blend that one in there with that one, and then we'll carry on. Interesting it. I think that bit's come out, ain't it? We might be able to add that one in it in a minute. See the faffing about really. Alright, if you didn't have cordage it'd be great, but if you have got cordage then it's better to use that than... But I am going to use this really for my... Uh, at least use one for the rucksack, the frame, the pack frame I'm going to make to show you that it can be done. losing myself now with this, I think. That is there. All requires patience. 
Patience, patience. That's what we've done so far. I'll have to go and get some more net also, just so that I can increase the length of this one. I should just use a knife this one I've just put I've just de-rooted it I don't normally uh, try to do that get a couple get another one cut it base get one more We've got three now. Another three to be getting on with. No gloves, as you can see. Mm. How hard am I? Not. But what I might do is I might blanch a few over the fire actually and have a have a little bit of a nettle nibble. Just uh, stoke that fire back up again, get a bit of flame. over the fire, keep twisting them, kill all the trichomes that are in there, the trichomes and the hairs. Up and halfway. Right. <laughs> oh, they are good. I do like them. They're better than some of the uh, some of the um, stuff that you can eat. Certainly tastes good. It reminds me of prawns or the sea or something like that. Definitely. If you haven't tried them, give them a try and see what you think. I think they taste like something from the sea. Good. Well, let's get back to my nettles on the uh, making some cordage. What I will say though, if you're going to be making sort of some long-term cordage and stuff like that with this, you're better off collecting a load of it, preparing it as best you can and then allowing it to dry. Just naturally let it air dry, it doesn't take that long. And then make your, uh, whatever it is you're going to make, some people make, you know, like to make bracelets and such like, or even the cordage, but the only thing is, because it's very moist right now, what would happen is that once it starts to dry out and it loses its moisture it shrinks and all your bindings and that would come undone they'd still be there but they obviously won't be as they won't be as um as appealing to look at and they definitely won't be as strong as if you uh as if you were allow them to dry first but on because of the um my time frame and making a uh, a makeshift rucksack frame of sorts um, I at least want to make one of the bindings with a bit of natural material i.e. stinging nettle 
so uh, it means that I've got to do a little bit of prep here. enough for me to use for at least one binding on the pack frame. I mean if for example you never had no paracord or anything like that to suspend your pot over the fire you could even use it to put a toggle through and suspend it over your fire because it's strong enough it'll be strong enough to hold it just to try not to let any flame flick on it which you do with paracord anyway. Let's see how we get on. Not the prettiest, but enough, it's just starting to drizzle. tried to do is gather materials that were just laying around there isn't nothing around you know sort of like apart from cutting trees down and stuff like which I actually took a branch off this white poplar oh, I don't mind them flying over rather than a plane but um, the only thing I've got at the moment to use as my back brace to go on where my hip is is this piece of elder so whether or not it's going to be strong enough we'll only uh, we'll only know so i'm going to use this piece of cord this piece of nettle cordage to bind it on and then uh, i'll use a bit of paracord on the other side Let's see how we get on Have your paracords at a premium. Any notches into it or anything like that. I've literally just trying to use it as it is. So obviously I'm tying a knot at the back. And this is my frame. I actually because I've kind of gone a bit with the paracord. I'm obviously going to use this as the top and then the lower beam to go on the back and then what I'll do is I'll put some paracord around the top there to act as my shoulder straps and then all I need to do is add a toggle system onto the frame and we'll use a poncho to cradle all the kitting and we'll see if it works. So that's for demonstration purposes. Then what I'm going to do is just use like the purple cord. I've literally clovitched that at the top, and that's going to kind of be my shoulder straps. 
So I've left the cord on there, there's a bundle of cord there, but I'm going to leave that for a minute and then I'm going to use the other stuff to tie the toggles onto so you can uh, secure your pack or your bag system, whatever it is, to the frame. So it's really important, really, if you can, to sort of like, you know, cordage, you know, as well as we can, we can knock it up out in the woods, making it out of brambles and stinging nettles and lime base and all this sort of stuff. It's, it can be quite a long process. And I think if you had to make some sort of rucksack system using stinging nettles and all that sort of stuff, binding it all, putting it all together, you know, it's, it'll take a long time, but it can be done. All right. So uh, we'll continue and see how... six bindings for the toggle system to go on the uh, on the uh, frame I'm cutting them the measurement I'm using with my arm I'm gonna be hand picture it done with forefinger and into my mouth and I, that should be enough So I'm going to put my toggle on. Okay. That. Go around once or twice. Look through there. It's almost like a fisherman's knot. Just doing it on one side. Or a choke knot. Put the toggle in. And then pull it tight up against it. And that's, that's one. And the other end will obviously be attached to the frame. Repeat the process again. You ain't got to do that knot, you could do a clove if you wanted to. But I prefer to do these knots. You can cut a little channel in there just to keep it from slipping, if you so wish.
frame now. Alright. And I'm literally going to connect these with all Clovich knots. Okay. Over the top. And through there. You could almost finish it off with a constrictor knot. And just pass it through there. And then you're guaranteed it to be quite secure, really. That's just one. Through the middle. And then pass it around that one. And pull it tight. So as you can see, I've got one there, one there, one the opposite side, one there as well. And then I've got two on the on the uh, hip frame, those around the bottom of your hip. Okay. So what I've done is I've laid out my poncho, um, emptied most of my rucksack out, to so put all the products that I'm going to carry out with me inside the poncho, and I need to now wrap this up. Well, as you saw there the bag was going to sink through so what I've done is I've got another piece of uh, wood and what I'm going to do I'm going to attach that on the uh, on this side because obviously that's going on the inside and I want that on the outside so what I'll do is I'll run my clovitch or my constrictor knot that it takes that beam in as well and it'll have something more to rest on Bundle. After a bit of fucking about, I'm chosen to pack snail on. Alright, use the toggle system to actually keep it in place. I had to move the, this down a little bit more to accommodate the poncho, and uh, we'll see how it goes on. Right, now I'm not going to cut this cordage because obviously I want to keep this. Alright. 
fine as it goes. See, to get the stray bits of paracord. So it actually ain't that bad, you know. It's quite comfortable. You know, it don't beat a modern rucksack, does it? But if you're stupid enough to lose your rucksack, then uh, this would be the next best thing, I suppose. I'm looking up some sort of pack frame. Alright, so uh, here you go. having a bit of lunch time uh, porridge I'll keep those neutrinos up I suppose
so I'm just waiting for the uh, fire to die right down douse it out with some water cover it over and then I'll be off so uh, another video there were a few bits going on with the frame a little bit of um, mucking around with the poncho and such like but I'm gonna have a little play around with it again when I get home um, and see how I get home I'll be taking that frame home with me uh, make some adjustments to it and I've also got a bit of strapping like a bit of seat belt or something like that that I can use for proper shoulder straps as opposed to a bit of paracord so uh, there it is folks so I hope you enjoyed that one all right again leave your comments and all stuff down below don't forget to check the description box out with all the links for the merchandise uh, my book um, and the podcast all right so uh, this case signing out see you on the flip side Take care folks, all the best. See you later. Take care.